books everywhere. Could appear like I'm smart, right? Okay. Oh, 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 uh oh. Got to fix that. Okay. All right. Welcome back. So, skin health. This is going to be exciting. Um, I think over the last week or so, I've gotten more questions about skin health than probably anything else, which is why I kind of want to do this talk on it. Now, before I start really quick, this is more for um, Instagram here, but if you're on YouTube, so I updated my uh, link tree. So if you go there, if you want to schedule a consult with me, that's there. Um, I also updated um, it. If you want to get, if you're looking for, you know, professional grade supplements from full script, you can sign up there. You get 10% off when you sign up. I've also had some questions about cell core and parasites, and we're going to talk a bit more about that maybe in future videos. But um, if you're looking for cell core products, uh, I have my code. I don't even know what my code is, but I have the actual code on my link tree. It's U T. I don't even know what it is. Some, some are lowercase, some are uppercase. You could check that out there and you could get the products using that code. Um, a lot of their stuff I would recommend, you know, working with a practitioner for, but I do really like their binders. They do have some really good stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so that's all available. That's all there. Again, you could reach out to me via DM or you could reach out to me. Hi, Eddie. Um, or you could reach out to me um, through my website uh, using the link in my link tree. <sighs> okay. With that out of the way, I got to pull up my notes here. <laughs> uh, skin health. Okay. Now, back in the day, I see, I was wondering, I'm like, where did I do this talk before? And I realized, oh, yeah, we did like four podcast episodes on this. So if you guys were around when we first had the podcast, the Art of Eating podcast with uh, Dr. Callie and me, we did like a four episode series on just the gut and the skin connection. Um, so I'm going to go through a little uh, some of those notes to start because I, it needs we need to put into context when we're talking about issues that are going on with your skin. Why? they're happening. And I want to do it through the context of the microbiome. Um, you know, uh, we need to start treating our bodies more at, like they're an ecosystem and less like they're some odd one-off occurrence thing. Like if you believe that as human beings, we are designed to live on this planet and, you know, we evolved to, to live here, <laughs> we're not strangers or invaders then hopefully some of this stuff will start making sense. So as I kind of go through my notes here, hopefully I'll start making sense. We'll start painting a picture a little bit here. Also, I'm doing this on a Wednesday. Can't do tomorrow because I have um, new patients. So um, yeah, good problem to have, but here we are. So with that, with that in mind, so let's get into it. So first thing we have to un understand is that less than 1% well, we have, let's start with this, scale, because as humans, we're not very good with scale in terms of numbers. Once we get to a certain number, everything's kind of a blur. So so when I say that bacteria outnumber our human cells 10 to 1, and then viruses inside, these are all internal, viruses outnumber bacteria 10 to 1. It's actually higher than that. But you have to understand that we're talking orders of magnitude that are create that are crazy. We're talking, you know, uh, roughly a hundred trillion bacteria cells that you're talking in the quadrillions, upwards of four quadrillion different viruses inside of us at any given time. So, and you're and you're talking roughly ten trillion cells in a human being at any given time, and we're we're making and. Uh, breaking down roughly a billion cells per day every single day. Um, we have skin cells that we'll get into that um, are discarded and we regrow them every single day. We're going to get into some of that. So that's all really, really important because if we're going to talk about skin health, we have to talk about how it's going to be a reflection of what's going on inside. So let's take it back. Let's take a, a ride back in the in the way back machine here where, again, we have evolved. We have a symbiotic relationship with bacteria, with fungi, with yeast, with other microbes 
that allow us to get where we go. It it doesn't happen by accident. So it, so when we look, you know, when we're looking at all the different kind of skin issues, the 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 common things that we see with skin, we have acne, we have athlete's foot, we have eczema, rod- rosacea, moles, uh, liver spots, uh, shingles, psoriasis, uh, rashes, warts, uh, melasma, skin tags. Uh, you can look at some of the the autoimmune type skin disorders. We're going to have psoriasis, uh, dermatomyositis, myositis, scleroderma. Um, you know, we we have some more you know life threatening skin issues, uh, pemphigus vulgaris, uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. Uh, one of my favorite ones is dress, uh, drug rash with eosinophilia. Um, and stress response, uh, stress symptoms, toxic shock, shock syndrome, uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Point is, we can keep going on and on with this list. And actually, according to the uh, dermatologic clinics, the Journal of Dermatologic Clinics, there are actually over three thousand different uh, varieties of skin disease uh, that exist. So you take a step back. You're like, whoa. 3,000. How do we get to that many? Um, Are we getting that good at diagnosis? Uh, Well, maybe. The interesting thing is the same same journal also found that, you know, we're having trouble that picking them apart ourselves, um, that uh, different specialists can differently interpret different pathologies. So if we're just kind of already guessing at the 3,000 that already exist, um, what is like a common thread? Um, Are they that complex? Now, we know that skin diseases are becoming more and more common. Uh, We know that they're becoming more and more prevalent. And we also know um, that skin issues, again, according to the same thing, uh, you're going to find that the prevalence estimates, they're going to surpass things like obesity, hypertension, and cancer. Um, there, And it's also considered one of the fastest growing medical conditions, uh, our skin conditions. And again, when we take a step back and realize, hey, our skin is a reflection of what's going on inside of us, we'll have to start kind of looking at this a little bit different. Um, now, if we think about it, you know, in, in a more conventional way, you know, we'll see, you know, it's viruses, it's bacteria, it's fungi, it's allergies, it's an autoimmune disease, it's in some other irritant that you're putting on your skin, or it's genetics. Um, you know, these are what the National Health Institute of Health will call, uh, or which are the main drivers that, of skin problems, right? So if this is the case, then like, if you would take For example, an antiviral for a virus, uh, if you stop taking it, then the symptoms should go away eventually. Um, But if it comes back after you take an antibiotic, which is for bacteria or an antifungal or an antihistamine or or a steroid or for an autoimmune disease, an immunosuppressant, which is going to decrease the functioning of your immune system, as soon as you stop them, it comes back, then is the problem really treated? In other words, is it this one thing that's causing the issue? Because you have to remember that is the model that we're working in, you know, right now. And when you consider some of the issues with antibiotics that they can wreck the the gut microbiome or lead to things like uh, headaches, uh, stomach pain, vomiting, nausea, um, a hairy tongue, which we talk about in Chinese medicine can lead to a lot of different things. Uh, Antibiotics can also interestingly lead to things like skin rashes. If you look up things like penicillin, so you're using something to treat a skin rash that can also cause us cause a skin rash. Just take a step back, think about that for a second. If there are alterations in the microbiome which could be caused by an antibiotic that you might be taking for a skin rash, one of the side effects is a skin rash or skin peeling or skin itching. Now I'm not going to go through the list and bore you with some of these but you're going to see these also if you come up with if you look at things like antivirals that are used or antifungals a lot of these that you say you'll use for skin issues actually cause more skin issues or digestive issues or a combination of both 
Why? Because the, the microbiome is related to our skin health, our gut, our, our inside, our internal health is indicated or indicative of our, our external health, our skin. These things do not come by accident. Same thing's going to happen with antihistamine, with antihistamines, uh, can also cause issues or dryness, um, uh, steroids. These are going, these can, uh, thin the skin. These can cause a variety of different skin issues from, uh, steroid rosacea, steroid acne. That's a thing. Um, that, that was the thing I remember when I was playing sports growing up, you know, when some kids would joke about taking steroids, they would talk about breaking out. Well, guess what? That's what steroids can do. Um, so yeah, uh, so, so steroids can cause issues, immunosuppressants. So when you stop taking those again, we can numb some of these symptoms out, but are we really fixing the main cause? In other words, are we just masking a problem and, and putting a perf um, proverbial Band-Aid on top of something, or are we going to actually fix what's going on? So when it makes sense to find, you know, what's going on? Well, first of all, you know, when it comes to skin, uh, skin weighs on average around nine pounds. It takes up 21 square feet, which is really cool. Um, it, <laughs> we have about 300 million skin cells on our skin at any uh, given time. And interestingly enough, the skin completely renews itself every 28 days. So every month, more or less, you're going to have a brand. We're literally going to be walking in a new skin. So whether you use that figuratively or metaphorically, it's pretty cool to, to realize, hey, every month you will literally be a new person that you are sharing yourself with the world. So pretty cool, I would say. Um, every minute you're going to be you're going to be uh, shedding. 30,000 to 40,000 skin cells. So every single minute you're losing tens of thousands of skin cells. Pretty cool. Uh, and is our skin also has a microbiome, which is very interesting. So there is a connection we have uh, with the gut and the skin and more recent studies. And these are things we kind of talked about um, in our podcast where that there is a connection between our gut microbiome and our skin. So uh, we find that that increasing um, diversity in the gut microbiome actually has a direct impact on the diversity of the skin, so long as you're not using things like antibacterial, antimicrobial soaps every two seconds. Um, but when we're talking about the skin, so it really becomes, you know, a balance of skin flora, right? So like everything else, we need to find balance. And there's an ecosystem. It's not just bacteria, right? It's yeast. Uh, there are uh, bacteria. There are viruses all on our skin all the time. Ad infinitum. Th this, we are symbiotes at the end of the day. We do not live in isolation, uh, despite what the media wants you to think or where or or tell you to do we do we are not in isolation ever we are a symbiote by definition so really important to kind of keep that in mind and this is what helps the skin you know protect us uh helps us control heat uh feel things you know evaporation uh you can store things and synthesize vitamin d uh you can excrete things like sweat we need skin to do all these things and they work best in conjunction with a healthy skin and gut flora. So really important to kind of keep that in mind. Um, you know, we, we know, for example, like there are symbiotic uh, organisms that live in our skin. Um, we, it, it helps us. So that microorganism, similar to the gut, we talk about 80% of our immune system is in the gut, but the, the, the flora on our skin also help train our immune system, our T cells that, allow us to that train them to react in the right way when they come across certain uh, different pathogens. So if we're constantly wiping that out, what do you think that's going to do? It's very similar to antibiotics if you're or, or uh, different medications like some of the ones we talked about or steroids that are going to cause issues with the gut lining. You get different things in, the body's going to think something else is working in a different way or, or, or think that something is not necessarily 
uh, working as well as it should or or mistaken something as foreign that shouldn't necessarily get through and react accordingly. So we have to start thinking, is it that we're malfunctioning or is it a, a correct response to a stimulus that's causing an issue? So, and we have to realize that most of the bacteria that are on our skin at any moment, they're either they're going to either have no effect whatsoever or actually be beneficial. Very few are actually going to be an issue. And they're only an issue when there is an imbalance or it's caused by an imbalance by, say, using Purell all day, every day, forever that allows things like opportunistic microbes to kind of come in and take over. So that stuff only happens when there's an imbalance or when there's something going on that can potentially cause that type of issue. So it, it is quite a bit of like a, a there, it is a complex relationship, right? So again, according to uh, the British journal of dermatology, the complex host microbe and microbe microbe interactions that exist on the surface of human skin illustrate that the microbiota have a beneficial role, much like that of the gut microflora microbes that participate in inflammatory diseases yet may not cause infections. So, so if we take a step back, microbes that participate in inflammatory diseases yet may not cause infections. In other words, it's an ecosystem. Again, it is similar to a rainforest. If we're constantly throwing fires onto the rainforest, if we're constantly, um, you know, poking holes and, and and destroying it in different pieces, it's going to cause issues and allow different microbes to take over. It's disrupting the balance. Things like antibiotics can disrupt the balance. Things like steroids can disrupt the balance. So other medications can do it. So when we're talking about skin health, the first thing, the first step is to start avoiding or getting rid of things that are going to disrupt disrupt your flora, both in your gut and on your skin. So these are things like heavy metals that, um, that I can't talk too much about that are in a lot of injections. Those can cause issues, especially when it comes to things like aluminum, like aluminum that are in most of them. Um, aluminum is toxic in, in every way. So it's going to cause issues. Again, not just neurological. If it's a gut issue, it can lead to potentially being a skin issue. Uh, medications, we went over them. Uh, that's going to be that those can cause issues. Again, you may get short term relief, but they're going to cause issues with the flora. Uh, toxic food, processed food, or if it's not organic, it's going to be an issue because even if we're just talking about things like glyphosate, which is the one thing that we actually know about we know it actually acts like an antibiotic. So if you're having that, or if you're having conventionally raised animal products, which again are fed all these glyphosate rich foods that survive the digestive tract and end up in the meat, you're going to get that along with other hormones and antibiotics given to the cows anyway, or the chickens or what have you. Uh, antibacterial soaps. Again, we're supposed to create a, a, a balance on our skin. Other things that can cause issues are things like household cleaners, uh, personal care products, conventional personal care products. You're going to have your dioxins. You're going to have uh, your bleach products. Uh, you're going to have endocrine disrupting chemicals that are going to cause issues in cosmetics. Um, uh, again, if you're living a sedentary lifestyle, you're not necessarily sweating. You're not excreting those toxins like urea through the skin, which we need to do. And if we're not excreting them, they're going to erupt in different ways. And then dealing with chronic stresses like physical, chemical, emotional. The other part that's really big here is talking about uh, drainage pathways. Now I talk about these a lot. And again, I talked about Cellcore a little bit earlier. So if you're looking for some of them, they, they have some really good products and um, uh, what is it? protocols, kits that you can use to help kind of get drainage going. So what does that mean? It's, are you pooping? Are you peeing? Are you sweating daily? And are you doing diaphragmatic breathing? Those are your four ways that you can eliminate toxins. It's pee, poop, sweat, breath. Got to be doing some version of that every day. Um, if you're not going to the bathroom, having a bowel movement at least once a day, ideally two to three times, 
there's going to be a storage of toxins that are going to get recirculated and end up in, back through the liver and ultimately potentially stored back in fat tissue. That's going to be an issue. So making sure that the intestines are working properly, that's going to be huge. Making sure the liver is working properly so it could process those toxins. This is where things like processed foods or hydrogenated oils and processed sugars really come into play because if we have to constantly break these down and detoxify them, that is extra stress that we are putting on these organs. Same thing with the kidneys. So is the blood flow pro coming through properly? Um, are we maintaining regular blood pressure because high blood pressure isn't a disease. It's a response to a stress. Um, you know, if you step on my foot, guess what? I'm going to get high blood pressure. Um, adrenals again, are, are we handling our adrenals and thyroid? Are we getting those sugar rushes or crashes or our energy levels out? Do we have balance between all these organs? Cause if not, these can potentially lead to issues with the skin. Now, when it comes to like beauty products and personal care products, there's a bunch of different things. You know, sunscreen. Oh, my God. I've talked about sunscreen so much. I made a post yesterday and, I, and I'm going to kind of stand by it. It's pretty straightforward. So like if a general good rule of thumb for skin health, if you can't eat it, you probably shouldn't put it on your skin. Why is that? Well, we have to start thinking it. If you ever put a lotion or a cream on your skin and you rub it in, eventually it disappears. It gets absorbed into the skin. That means it gets directly into the bloodstream. Now, if you ever looked at a cross-section of skin, you'll know that blood vessels run right under it, which means whatever you put on your skin is going to directly get into the bloodstream. At least a portion of it is going to get directly into the bloodstream. So again, if you cannot consume it, why would you put it on your skin? Why would you put toxic sunscreens on your skin that have chemicals that are going to cause issues. I mean, we have sunscreens that are taken off the market every year, seemingly now, because they have different things that are cancer-causing agents. Why would you put that on your skin? Um, propylene glycol, we've talked about that in for other reasons, but can end up in different products. Uh, SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate, you could find this in a ton of different toothpaste. So again, if you have to spit it out or if your toothpaste has a warning on it, again, not to say you should swallow your toothpaste all the time, but if it's poisonous to swallow, you should think twice and look into a different one. Uh, triclosan, this is another one that's found in a lot of different, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of different uh, toothpaste and issues like that. Um, phthalates, the, the parabens, uh, fragrances, synthetic colors, these are largely endocrine disruptors that are going to mess with your hormones. We just talked about adrenals and um, thyroid. So if these are going to cause issues with that, can they affect the skin down the road? Yes, of course they can. So again, it's I'm going to come back to this. Is if you're going to put something on your skin, if you're worried about burning in the sun, maybe put on a long sleeve shirt or a hat or use coconut oil. Uh, coconut oil, I believe, has an SPF of like five or six or something like that. Use something that that you can use that way. There are always better natural alternatives. When we're talking about skin health and skin burns in general, I need a drink of water. Been going at it. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, when we're talking about skin burns, I've talked about this before. Um, you need the antioxidants. Your what you consume is going to be your best form of sunscreen. If you you end getting sun exposure on a regular basis, you build yourself up the same way you would build up going to a gym. But antioxidants are huge. So vitamin A, C, and E rich foods, a lot of different colors, beta carotenes, uh, red foods, orange foods, yellow foods, a lot of leafy greens, vitamin E. Um, you know you can try a test, you can get something like astaxanthin. Take that for a few weeks before going out in the sun. I bet you, you will get less sunburns if you are prone to them because that's going to build up your antioxidant stores. Okay. Water. Water's a big one too. Iodine. We didn't even talk about that, but let's get into that. Thyroid health. 
Um, thyroid's a huge thing when it comes to your skin. And if you think about it, if you look at a periodic table, right, you have a table of halogens, halogens. It's the second to the right, uh, from the right, I guess I should say, column. Those are your halogens. That's where iodine's going to be. But here's the thing. Other halogens like bromine, like chlorine, uh, like fluorine, fluoride, can attach to the same thing, to the same receptors as iodine. So if you're drinking chlorinated water, that can potentially cause an issue. Uh, now, we know chlorine can dis chlorine destroys uh, a lot of the proteins uh, in the body. So short term, it can lead to dry, itchy skin. So if you're continue continually exposing yourself to chlorine, it could lead to very dry skin. Uh, really important to kind of keep that in mind. So if you're drinking chlorinated water, you might want to look into investing in... Uh, a water filtration system uh, uh, for fluorine and chlorine, fluoride and chlorine. So these are both can cause issues when it comes to that. Number two, it's going to be optimizing the gut flora, right? So we talked a little bit about that as far as cleaning that up. But what we're talking about, you know, listen, organic is most as best as possible, plant-based. These are going to be things that we're going to do that are going to optimize your gut flora. We need the fiber that the microbes can build and build a foundation on. And the only way we do that is with a variety of plants. That That's just what it is. Um, if you are, that that's going to be, you know, a big thing. So ideally you'd get it local, ideally seasonal. Um, you know, healthy fats are great. Talk about olive oil, coconut oil, nuts, uh, seeds. Um, you know, all of these are going to be great. Avocados. So all of these are really, really awesome. Uh, choices to help you maximize your gut flora. Uh, fermented vegetables. Um, you have to get fermented foods in there, probiotics. So, you know, whether it's sauerkraut or kimchi or a yogurt or something, um, if you have compromised digestion in a way, you might want to consider juicing or blending a little bit to help increase that nutrient absorption because the blending will pre-digest um, a bit of that food. So if you need help with digestion, consider something like digestive bitters or slippery elm or marshmallow or something that can help heal the gut. And again, this is what I help work with people on. So this is why if, you know, if you're interested, those are things that we can work on. And then also balancing out omega-3s and omega-6. Your average American is going to be 20 to 30 times higher omega-6 than 3 when the optimal ratio is like 1 to 1 or 1 to 4. So we're not even close as uh, as a general whole. Now, obviously, a lot of you listening probably are, but you need to understand these are some of the bigger uh, differences that we're seeing. Other things that are really good for skin health. So dark leafy greens, these are huge. Why? Because they have uh, detoxification molecules in them. Things like chlorophyll, which are great. Chlorella, uh, which of course will have chlorophyll, but these are fat soluble. So having these with meals will help absorb them. But uh, your cruciferous vegetables are great. Kale, cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, arugula, they're going to be huge and help support that detoxification. Uh, dandelion, really great. Bitters, uh, things like milk thistle, uh, burdock root. <laughs> oh, man, I've been I was on a meeting just before this and I'm losing my voice a little bit, getting really into it. Uh, broccoli, all of these are going to be great. Antioxidant rich foods. These are huge. This is going to include things like all of your different berries, again, provided they're organic. Um, spinach, nuts, uh, seeds like pecans, uh, walnuts. These are great. Artichokes, uh, beans like kidney beans or chickpeas. These are all freaking awesome and loaded with different antioxidants provided you're getting them organic, you know, grapes, all of these awesome, awesome, awesome choices. Um, you know, some of the healthy fats, we talked about them, you know, balancing the omega three, six ratio, maybe you get more chia seeds or flax seeds in a smoothie, um, or coconut oil or, um, olive oil when cooking. So all of these are, are awesome options. Um, the fermented foods, again, talked about some of them pickles, well, if you're getting fermented pickles, great. Uh, miso, kimchi, sauerkraut, uh, yogurts, all of these are awesome. Uh, you need, again, the reason why we need these is our gut flora will help make things like B vitamins. 
Uh, they produce short chain fatty acids that help support the gut lining and help um, increase digestion. So really, really kind of important stuff here. Oof. Your vitamin A rich foods, your carotenoids, your orange foods, sweet potatoes, carrots, uh, squashes of all kind, right? See, the, uh, the fall is here, which I'm excited about. Astaxanthin, that's a carotenoid. These are super really, these are really good for skin health and eye health. So vitamin A rich foods. Um, if you're looking for things to add on, you know, uh, topically, again, we talked about uh, coconut oil, but maybe uh, cocoa butter or aloe vera or shea butter, you know, all of these are really, really helpful here. Um, so again, when we're looking at this, and again, vitamin A, you know, carrots, sweet potatoes, spinach, apricots, uh, broccoli, squash, uh, vitamin E, again, sweet potatoes, spinach, almonds, a lot of different nuts and seeds are going to be here. Sunflower seeds, um, different types of wheat, you know, uh, olive oil, all going to be awesome, awesome choices here. Vitamin D is crazy because if we're blocking vitamin D, with sunblock, we know that like 80% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. So getting at least some sun exposure, especially in the beginning, and you can build yourself up over time, is going to make a big, big difference. Uh, vitamin K2, this is another reason why fermented foods are really good. Why? Because our gut microbes actually convert K1 into K2, provided we have a healthy flora. Um, so fermented foods can be really, really helpful here. So uh, curcumin is great. Why? Because anti-inflammatory. So you can use this actually topically, turmeric, or um, internally, this should helpful when you're talking about helping limit free radical damage. Um, so as an antioxidant and an antimicrobial really great for all kinds of different um, skin disorders. And there's a ton of studies that back that up. Okay. That was a lot. We just covered. <laughs> I'm, I feel like I'm losing my voice. We've been going so long, but like, what are we saying? What are we seeing here? So it's about balancing those pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory fats. Again, omega three sixes. We need both. That's really, really important. Um, but we're way out of balance when it comes to that. If there is an issue with leak with leaky gut, chances are there's going to be an issue with the skin somewhere along the line. So when I see some issues going on with the skin, I immediately think something's got to be going on wrong uh, or on the inside. And maybe that is a lot of different antibiotic use growing up or um, a ton of different medications or medical procedures or something else that could um, really cause a lot of different issues that maybe that have led to breakouts with this stuff. If it is hormonal, then why is it out of balance? Do we need to regulate the nervous system and build that up? A lot of different things that we can do and look at. But the point is, there are answers for it. And the more that we realize that our body or our bodies are an ecosystem and we're not just doing the symptom drug type thing or the symptom supplement type thing and trying to rebuild that, that's going to be what makes the biggest difference at the end of the day. Um, we have to rebuild the integrity of our insides, our, our gut, our, our flora. And when that happens, the skin often follows. So the skin is often a reflection of the, of within. And that's ultimately what I kind of want to leave you with today. So thank you for tuning in. Um, like I mentioned before, if you want to work with me, check out the link in my bio. You could get on the link tree. You go to my website, insideouthealthwellness.com. Uh, feel free to fill out the form. I'd be more than happy to get in touch with you. We could potentially work together that way. Um, outside of that, thank you. I will see you guys next week. I appreciate the sub if you're on YouTube and I appreciate the sub if you're on IG. All right. Have a good one. Peace. Okay.